Hey there. Hey Clay, how's it going? Good, how are you? Very good. Perfect timing as well. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. So that's awesome. And it's like, uh, Clay Melton, like, how's the life right now? You got a new single, you know, and you got another one coming out and not far. And it's like, you're doing good on Spotify, Apple Music, and, you know, everything's looking good. Yeah, definitely. Thanks a lot. I, I mean, it's uh, going smooth. We're happy. We're on the road more than ever before this year. And so it's been kind of nice that this past month I've spent some time with family, kind of uh, getting all that in before we're just go, go, go the rest of the year. It's like that you do have tour dates coming in April and, uh, and your schedule is going to start getting busy. And like, how, how far is that going to take you? Uh, I know we got dates set up as far as uh, August and September. So we're kind of doing, you know, month on, couple weeks off. Um, on the off time, we're working on our new music for the album coming out in uh, spring 24. And so it's uh, it's going to be an interesting process this year, just, you know, really kind of playing both sides as far as live in the studio goes. Let's just say from from your point of view, like, being a musician and, you know, promoting yourself and stuff like that, how complicated does it get today? You know, because it's like, you, you, you probably have to do a lot of work, you know, instead of just playing your instrument, you're like probably on a computer as well. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's uh for musicians, for any kind of creative, you know, it's very much like running a small business, you know, you're just going to wear all the hats until you can grow your team. And, uh, you know, we're a pretty small condensed team still, but it's still so necessary to have everybody, you know, pull different weights. And I mean, uh, you know, as far as today, like with promotion and stuff like that, you know, when you say that word now, it's almost synonymous with social media. And while that's something we were on, I still really have a firm belief that the fundamental of being a working band and going out and playing shows, meeting new people, uh, and just putting out music, that's the, those are your fundamentals that's going to apply to wherever somebody, like maybe an artist that's just starting, you know, and doesn't know how to promote. Maybe the, that route is just going and playing as much as you can. Yeah. It's like when you do play a lot, you grab experience, you know, from two people in the audience to 5,000. You know, you're, you're still getting experience. You know? Yeah. I mean, it, in the live context, all your personal experience kind of compounds. And then you're learning at this accelerated real-time rate of what works and what doesn't, what people react to uh, in different ways. It's the best teacher. You have a Montrose sign in back you. What is that about? Is that like Ronnie Monstros or is it just Montrose? Uh, no, there's a, there's a part of town in Houston called uh, Montrose and a street. Uh, <laughs> okay. Actually, uh, that was... Um, yeah, I found it on the side of the road uh, with the cross. The cross street was Clay and Montrose, and uh, the Clay sign somewhere around the house somewhere. But uh, I was uh, <clears throat> kind of a long story how I ended up uh, in my apartment, but uh, yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. And you got a nice uh, Jimi Hendrix backdrop I've never seen before. What is that like a towel? Thanks. It's a it's a blanket actually. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and uh, I used to bring it on like some of our earlier like van tours. That was the the good night blanket. But uh, yeah, I got to hang it up in the house right now. Hendrix is you know that's he's the reason I started playing and fell in love with the guitar. I mean, and then I see Stevie Ray Vaughan, I do believe, in in the bass. I mean, when you got these guitar players on the wall, with that much influence they gave you know to guitarists in general, it's pretty amazing, you know. And how you think they would, you know look at the scene of today and and say well I'd, I'd release a new album or or maybe just play live you know how would they do it now oh man i love to think of where hendrix could have gone because he was so ahead of his time and experimental i mean you know electric ladyland um was the only album they made in their new studio and it's you know it's so far out in psych and eddie kramer's doing all these wild things and so I think it would have been interesting and it uh, probably would have changed maybe if both those artists were still making music or had continued to um, after they passed may have changed the directory for uh, guitar in modern music. Um, but yeah, it, it's something every now and then you hear an artist sometimes and you're like, Oh, you know what? That sounds like where that could have gone, you know? 
Yeah, because who knows where, what direction, you know, they would have grown in because it's like when you, when you play like blues, rock, and, and, and styles like that, there's only a certain route you can go. But then it's like eventually you start making the road wider, you know, and because it, it's still going, you know, since the early days. Yeah, you know, I, I learned the other day, I, you know, I'm a huge music history nerd. Uh, it's always fascinated me. And of course, with Hendrix and something I had never heard before was that right before he passed, he there were talks or plans about a project between him and Frank Zappa, um, which, you know, Zappa is obviously known for having large ensembles. And I think it, I think that may have been uh, somewhere that uh, he was heading because you have, you know, the Woodstock performance with Hendrix, you know, uh, Gypsy Sun and Rainbow's band is a large mm -hmm. ensemble of uh, instrumentalist and it, that's why I always loved about Hendrix uh, and ZZ Top and Steve Ray Vaughan just three piece formats which we are as a band is they really it, it's such a cool fusion moment when everybody's fulfilling the very necessary role that there is to fill when you're just a three piece but then on top of that it kind of like pushing the envelope you know yeah, absolutely and let, let's say as a, a guitarist when you do go on the road, how much gear do you bring? You know, because you got to limit yourself too. You can't start bringing everything. Can't you can't bring it all? You know, for uh, uh, forever, I've always pretty much played one guitar the entire set. I play a Fender Stratocaster. I've always been partial one. One, I mean, it was a uh, just the step I gravitated towards because of my influences. But also, you know, for me over the years, I think the Stratocaster is a great kind of like Swiss Army knife with its five-way pickup selector and just being able to do everything I'm looking for. But, you know, I mean, I run a couple basic effect pedals uh, in front of a Fender amp. Um, and I also run in tandem with that, like a Marshall Plexi type amp, the one right behind me, actually. Um, mm -hmm. That's just clean the guitar straight into it. And uh, I'm digging it, you know, and this year we're doing headlining shows. So I'm able to work in a couple guitar swaps uh, and they're both Fender guitars. One's a weird modded out uh, photo flame Strat from nine, from the nineties. And one's like a Ventura series, which is a new Fender run, which is like the 72 deluxe with the humbuckers, okay. the Stratocaster neck. And it's like that when you do start working on your guitars, like Eric Clapton did and Eddie Van Halen and David Gilmore, all the greats, Hendrix too, you, you do have, kind of your own style and sound now you know because it, it is technically your guitar yeah for sure you know i i remember a couple months ago uh, our bass player uh zachary cox he's a uh, i've known him since middle school he joined the band about a year and a half ago and he's a guitarist first which is one aspect of you know as far as our uh group sound goes i love having but you know he's playing my guitar and he's like yeah it's definitely that's a player's guitar you know it, it it, it's set up how you like it and he likes his guitars different and that's what i love about stratocasters and sp specifically is just they are it's such a great model for the guitar to where you can really kind of like you know tailor it to what you like out of the instrument and get you know a very if you want to play softly and get a lot of uh you know uh room in your playing dynamically you can get that or you can have it low and fast you know it's just it's a favorite going into like let's say live on a wire and you know and recording it you know and from writing it to recording it how much you know energy and and toss you you put into this you know just from getting the structures going on and, and, and stuff like that with live on a wire we wrote it coming off of uh our summer 22 two tour uh, we were supporting a band out of canada actually uh the blue stones and uh des rocks out of new york city and we wrote that song like right after we came off that tour. And the song's kind of about, you know, the go, go, go of touring and the whirlwind it can be, you know, just late nights and driving to the show and just doing it again. And uh, I think because that tour was so smooth for us, that's why we were excited to write about it like that. Uh, but, you know, when we came, came off the tour, we started playing in the room together here in my living room. We rehearse and, um, we cut it here as well for all our new music. We've been recording just DIY ourselves uh, for the tracking process and working with our uh, producer, Sebastian Cure, who's in uh, Barranquilla, Colombia. 
So we're working remote, but here we're able to kind of stretch out and give the process time, you know, which is nice as opposed to renting studio time and needing to pay more if you want to recut drums. We yeah. can kind of sleep on it and come back to it. Uh, so there was, you know, uh, I'd say a fair amount of pre-pro process, but whenever we come down to really doing the final tracking, we try and get a performance, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like that. You mentioned Columbia. That's a little ways, you know, from where you are from. So, I mean, how does it, does that work? Is just like completely emails. And just... Yeah, we've uh, known Sebastian. He's actually who hooked me up with our drummer, Zach Grindle, who I've been playing with coming up on nine years. And uh, I did a project with him in uh, 2015 and was looking for a drummer after that. And that's how we hooked up with Zach. But since then, we've done several projects with uh, Sebastian. He's mixed our our latest album, Live in Texas, uh, which he did remote as well. So it, it is all online. Luckily, Sebastian really gets what we're going for and uh, really delivers. Like that first mix we get back is so much closer than it has been in the past sometimes just because, you know, we, we really understand uh, what we're going for. Um, and so he's definitely the secret secret uh ingredient to all these releases okay and uh, that's like interesting you know i wasn't expecting that but that's great like one question for you clay do you live and breed music is it like you wake up in music in the morning and it's all you think about and it's all i'm gonna do or is it like how is it you know i'm taking the, the day off or just i'm just working constantly no, nah, it, it's always on my mind, um, whether it's music. And, you know, I mean, we are talking about earlier the different hats that you got to wear being an independent musician. And so, of course, you know, I'm uh, consumed about uh, the business side of things, but I like to stay on top of that and focus so I can just be creative when the when the time is right. Yeah, uh, there's uh, you know, I don't have a lot of guitars, but there's pretty much a guitar within arm's reach in most <laughs> most of the rooms of my place. And, uh, you know, I'm always, I'm always picking it's, it's, uh, I, I don't love anything else like it, you know? Well, that's what you got to do, I guess, if you want to be a great guitar player. Yeah. It's a, it's just me and my dog right now. And so that, that if that says anything. <laughs> well, Clay, uh, you have a great product as like, um, your new album or when does that come out or is it just single bass now? Because it's like that world kind of changed too, it seems. It, it it did. You know, I think like artists can do, I think, you know, it can work either way. Um, and for us, I just wanted to get music out before we got back out on the road this year. But we're so tour heavy this year um, that we're taking the rest of the year in between tours to finish writing and tracking. And we're looking at a spring 24 release. Uh, for a couple different reasons, but we'll have some things coming out between now and the end of the year to tide fans over and, you know, share more of what we're doing. And like another thing here, YouTube, we can't forget the master, big YouTube company, you know, the, the music videos. What's your take on music videos? I Well, I think uh, people gravitate to, towards video today anyways. It's how they're consuming most things. Um, and so I have found, you know, when we've supported, uh, like a music release with any type of video, you know, that only helps. Yeah. Um, I think obviously, you know, it's a different, it, your music video can be anything these days, you know, it, it can be of any production uh, value. It can be, you know, playful. It can be serious. It can be, you know, whatever you like, it doesn't have to be the MTV quality storyline music video that, you know, was the only format of music video we knew for a long time. That's why we've done a lot of live music videos. Um, we supported our Live in Texas album with uh, some live videos from that. Um, we shot uh, Say That You Love Me in a venue in Houston. And uh, I, I think, you know, everything that we've been doing musically has been trying to express and showcase, you know, what happens when we just get into a room with just the three of us. And yeah. live is usually the easiest way to show that for us. Live is the way to go, I guess. And this the best way always it's the real thing yeah it's the real thing just like you said uh all right clay you have a great uh week and um hopefully you get some more products coming out soon for sure i appreciate it all right you take care cheers okay bye